series. Um, I'm Kristen. We have some guests online, I think, streaming on YouTube. So welcome to the folks who are not here with us and welcome to the awesome folks in this room. Thanks for coming. Um, big thanks to Rory in the sound booth up here who has done a beautiful job fixing our gorgeous soundscape. And um, to Chelsea, who's gonna be monitoring the chat on the live stream. I'm gonna turn this over to Katja to make introductions tonight, but um, Katja is a, she's our wonderful um, teacher for type two, or type one, sorry. Um, and I've known Katja for, I think maybe close to 10 years now, is that possible? Um, we worked together at Bitch Media when you were newer to town and first starting out, and you've gone on to do amazing things with um, Happy Lucky and Adidas and Nike and some wonderful clients and just as a great human. So I'm gonna turn it over to Katja. Thank you. Well, hi everybody, welcome. Uh, welcome to our people online as well. Um, and yeah, so as Kristen said, I'm an assistant teacher here and I um, teach type one. And today I have the honor to introduce to you to a design wizard here uh, next to me. So Nemanja has been working here in Portland for a while. He's worked for um, some of the local names like Wyden and Kennedy. And he's been working in Nike for several years now. He was the um, uh, global art director for the concept, innovation, purpose, and athletes um, department at Nike. And now currently he's at um, Global Jordan, correct? Yeah, Jordan, yeah. Yeah. Um, so another thing that, uh, that's very fascinating about uh, my buddy here is that uh, he used to lead a design studio in Serbia. And what's fascinating about it is the fact that this studio emerged with the idea of challenge um, the role that design ha currently has and kind of like seeing it from the perspective of like having it been more removed from the market. Um, and thus, you know, their projects obviously were questioning notions, concept, practices um, of design. And of course, Nemanja will tell us more about it. Um, you probably have run into his work because it's been featured in ma many popular media outlets like AIGA, Eye of Design, uh, Communication Arts, and like it's nice that in like I guess you know there's because yeah. you know well, it's a few of them yeah, yeah That's all over pretty, the place <laughs> pretty accurate <laughs> yeah so well without further ado um, I will let Nemanja take it from here and once again welcome and thank you for joining us. Thank you, Katya. Thank you, Christine and Chelsea. Um, and yeah, I'm also gonna thank everyone who's here. Like, this is actually really good that there's people, and I love seeing people. Like, I think we all miss this. Um, so thank you all for coming in, and everybody, like, a big hi to everybody who's tuning in online. So um, just a couple of things before I start. Um, today, I'm not gonna talk so much about the process. I'm not going to talk about specifics of design. What I'm going to actually going to do is I'm going to take things a little bit, uh, approach things from a different perspective. I'm going to tell you guys a story and a journey of who I am and where I came from. I think like that's very important because I think like for all of us as creatives, it's like we all put ourselves and our souls and our minds into the work and I like I would love for you to kind of like get to know me through my story and like my background and where I came from and kind of like you'll see that reflecting work so I'm gonna be talking about myself <laughs> but if you guys have any questions afterwards about like specifics on a project or anything like you, like anything that's, that kind of like, I didn't maybe like touch because I'm not gonna be talking about the process itself. Uh, feel free to ask the questions after. All right, so what I'll be talking today is um, the things that I like, things that I haven't learned is kind of like, that's where everything's gonna boil down, right? Um, I think like that's, that's a very valuable lesson at least for me, and that's something that I cherish a lot. And like those are like those small mistakes and errors that we all do throughout the work and throughout our process and throughout our life. They kind of like pave the way and like make who we are. And like so, as I said, like to understand, you know, where I am, where I was, and who I am today, uh, I'm kind of like going to go really, really, you know, like to the beginnings. 
Um, so as Katya said, like this is me. Uh, I'm, I think, I believe like I'm two or three years old here. Uh, I was born in former Yugoslavia. For those who don't know, uh, it used to be uh, a country uh, consistent of six uh, different countries, uh, where actually states, it's kind of like a similar concept to the to, to USA. Um, and uh, it would like the, the beautiful thing of, of Yugoslavia back then um, is that it was such a multicultural uh, part of Europe, which afterwards kind of like served as a, as a benchmark and as kind of like an overall idea of of European Union, like European Union basically based all their criteria and like everything that came afterwards uh, on uh, on the idea of Yugoslavia. It's kind of like multicultural, um, a lot of different confessions, so from Orthodox, Catholic to Muslim. So like these three confessions like w lived in harmony and peace for 40 years because Yugoslavia came to be after the Second World War and um, What's important, like, is this guy, basically Tito. He was he was the person who kind of like rallied everybody, and uh, and gave this body to like these different nations and these different cultures, uh, and he kind of like got everybody together, and um, he was he was kind of like the the pinnacle. He was the leader in a way. Uh, it was a communist country, uh, but it, not in a way of how communism is being perceived. Uh, it wasn't like Russia. Uh, it wasn't like that heavily um, uh, autocratic in a way, but it was still a communist place. It means uh, in, in, in a way which like the socialism was like so uh, well imposed that uh, all the rights were met, uh, everybody had equal rights. Uh, and I think like that was very important just kind of like for the development of the of the state itself. And uh, within, within that state, um, this is a very interesting moment. This lady was kind of like the thing. She was, she was, a, she was a cultural icon. And she like it, 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 like, it didn't matter if you liked or didn't like, she was there. She was kind of like present and she was kind of like culturally shaping the landscape of, of, of Yugoslavia. And another important, very, very important thing is we're, we're very, very proud of soccer. And is for you guys in the States, it's a different thing. You, you guys have different sports. We cherish very much soccer. Um, and this crew here is kind of like the, the last stand before the civil war that happened uh, and then kind of like tore down the country into pieces that came the same year. Um, and this is, this is really kind of like a hard, hard moment for in history, not only for, for the country itself, but kind of like for the, whole, for the entire region because it divided what once was very much united. Uh, it, it created like a complete chaos in a country um, and kind of like all the, all the nations that lived together got not only separated by the war, but also got separated by, by the, the journey got separated by, by the thought, like the sheer idea that once connected everybody together, like this one war, like one stupid idea kind of like broke everything apart. And, um, and unfortunately, like the, the beautiful story that used to be um, got ended. Um, but what happened afterwards, and this is where my story, my personal journey kind of like flows in and comes in. Uh, the war started in 91, uh, late 91. I was uh, 11 years old back then. And uh, all these things that I told you about the culture and uh, like these few small like glimpses of like the things that were important sort of like stopped and paved the way and opened up like so in this like darkness in a way, like opened up something that actually was very interesting. And so um, to understand this, um, we didn't have like, it was 91, so everything was under sanctions, war, completely different background. Uh, we had three channels on the TV. 
So we had like first, second channel, and the third channel um, was basically broadcasting MTV from midnight till 7 a.m. And that was kind of like the moment where we had our window to the world. Like that was the, that was where like we, we like at least me, I started like drawing a lot of inspiration. I was uh, exposed to a new culture. I was exposed to something that afterwards kind of like became something that, that uh, will pave my way and then will kind of like be the, 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 the foundation of my research, my love, my passion. And, uh, and afterwards, like you'll see through the work, kind of like the complete ideology. So it started with this simple bang. Um, I saw this uh, very early in the morning one day when I was preparing to go to a field trip with my school. And I heard this, like I heard the sound, I heard the song and I was, I was completely hooked. I was like, this is like, I never saw this. I never heard something like this. And I was like, that's it. Like I found something that I can love, that I can follow and I can explore a little bit deeper. And because the, 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 the war was going on for a couple of years, the whole country was very deprived of, of cultural events. And um, in 95, uh, like I wouldn't, no, like I would, I couldn't guess that uh, Prodigy is actually going to be the first uh, band that We've will come to before. the Serbia after the sanctions were were when lift off. They will be lift, the I first mean, band, this the and this is the first time, time actually they played, played this song, and that was in Belgrade in the, in uh, December 8, 1995. I was 15 years old. It was completely nuts. It was like the full, the, the full stadium. There were like 10,000 people. And they played this for the first time and they completely opened up the country. And after this, the whole kind of like underground and electronic scene started kind of like slowly blossoming and opening up. And uh, that was like for me, at, when I was 15, um, kind of like the start of not, not, not the start, but there was like the, the, the ignition of like, okay, I'm, I'm like definitely inside this culture. And so like I started going into clubs and the club scene is like, I mean like uh, we, I've been talking to Chelsea before we started and uh, I told her like this is, this is something that, I, that like I honestly miss so much because um, I used to like go out and clubbing is not only about music, it's for me it was about the connection. It was about meeting new people. It was about like understanding new, new like uh, understanding new, th new, new things, trying out new things. It was kind of like about like just the connectivity. Um, and this was like the, the 96 was my year. Like I did so much, but little did I know is that uh, the 96 was, was also the year where when I discovered like another thing and I'm gonna just let you guys look at this if you haven't had the chance. Sans cesse pour se rassurer. Jusqu'ici tout va bien. Jusqu'ici tout va bien. Jusqu'ici tout va bien. Mais l'important c'est pas la chute. C'est l'atterrissage. So for those who don't know, like this is the beginning of uh, the movie Lion. Uh, if you if you haven't had the chance to see it, like watch it. That's uh, that's a, one of the first movies from uh, French director Matthew Kasovitz. Uh, Vincent Cassel is playing in this movie. This is an, an epic scene where he's reenacting uh, the um, uh, Al Pacino from uh, from Scarface, and he's reenacting that in, uh, in in that movie. I mean, like the whole movie is just kind of like the sublimation of everything that I, that happened to me, but from completely different perspective coming from, uh, from, from Paris, coming from uh, the suburbs of Paris where like also like this multiculturality uh, reside. And, uh, and it, it gave me so much. And another thing was that there's like this amazing soundtrack that's coming and like following the whole movie. And it's kind of like very culturally relevant. 
Um, and the, the thing that actually happened, like, so 96, I started going to clubbing and like learning about the culture, uh, looking at the music, looking at uh, seeing this, this movie. Uh, in late 96, uh, I moved with my mom to Paris, where my journey kind of like started. Uh, back then, yes, they were smoking in airplanes. I w I w I'm never going to figure out like why. Uh, like the, the front rows were smoking, uh, smokers and the back rows were not. Because like it's, it's an airplane, you're kind of like stuck in a tin can. But it, w it was a thing. So I lived there uh, and I w lived through this. Um, and uh, so I got to Paris and basically I, I got into uh, Lycée Technique Auguste Renoir, which is kind of like equivalent of, of high school, but it's a technical high school and that's where, where I started my journey uh, in design. I always kind of like knew that uh, I wanted to do something in design because of my background. My father, he's, uh, he's a designer and my mom, she was a cultural attaché in, in Paris. And so they kind of like already gave me that, that insight of, of, of like where I wanted to be uh, without like, it, they didn't even plan to see. They kind of like, it was like, honestly, like it was very organic. Um, and after like, after moving to Paris, uh, all those things that I started back in Belgrade got like, uh, got, got a moment of where I, started like contextualizing and like I started contextualizing all these thoughts, random thoughts and like these passions uh, within the environment that was already like for a couple of years uh, immersed deeply in it. And uh, I found my Mecca there as well. Um, so I was going like back in Serbia, I was going to Industria, which was like one only place where you can like get immersed into, into the culture. But I kind of like found this in, in this club, which exists still today, it's Rex Club. And I started like understanding, you know, like rediscovering and discovering the culture of electronic music scene. But besides, besides, like, besides the Rex Club and like the, that culture, I also started discovering uh, the, the, the other aspects of music. So I started like, I immersed myself into DJing. I started buying records. Uh, this is the record store, which still exists in Paris, um, that I used to go. I used to, like, I bought here probably my first thousand records. Um, I still go there and visit sometimes when, uh, when I'm in Paris. But I also went to free parties, which was a completely different, so we're talking about the club. It's a very intimate surrounding. Like this is, this is where the, the, like the, the, the free parties for me like were the moment where uh, uh, where you can, um, uh, the moment of unexpected. Like that's where, the, that's where the free parties kind of like opened up my mind a little bit more. And I also had a chance, and this is, I would like, I, I would like for you, for, for, for those who are here and also like you guys online, um, I'm gonna pause this for a second. There's one interesting thing um, which you probably won't be able to see here is that no one's holding a phone People are interacting. There is a, the, like the, the, this event, I don't know, like there was probably um, 50, 60,000 people. And it was just like going around the streets of Paris uh, with a lot of like different sound systems. And just like that culture, again, surrounded around like the singular idea of uniting people, music, um, and just like kind of like sheer fun and energy. Like that, that was that was so inspiring, and it kind of like just was building up from there. And all these like all these emotions and like all these connections, kind of like were were settling even deeper inside myself and defined who I am. So from here, um, I'm just gonna do a quick one because I like this was a really setup. This was a setup just for you guys to understand because electronic music and uh, electronic culture for me was the foundation. That was something that I discovered by, I, we can call it an accident or whatever, but I discovered it uh, unintentionally and it became like the, the, the driving force of, of, of who I am and afterwards uh, my work. So in 2001, um, I came back to Belgrade 
moved back with my mom, so I spent five years. Um, I was like kind of like going on and off, started working, uh, tried and applied to a couple of art schools, didn't make it. Um, I notably applied to Gerrit Rietveld, which is Academy in Amsterdam, and uh, I got accepted, but I got a job offer and I decided to stay in Belgrade and kind of like, I was like, okay, um, I have enough inside of me to get me going and to get me to, to like give me an inspiration. So like I, I decided of, you know, like I'm not gonna uh, accept this and I'm gonna stay here and, you know, see what happens. I was researching a lot, trying to figure out who am I within like now within the creative space. So I was doing a lot of flyers. Um, I was doing artworks for, for different uh, labels, uh, doing record covers. Uh, it was, but everything was still around music and like heavily involved with music. Um, I worked in a couple of smaller design studios, but I kind of like, I, I was like, I, I was lo very lost creatively because I wanted to touch so many different things and I couldn't figure out like what it was. And um, he, kind of like fast forwarding from like from that moment, getting to 2011 where I actually met uh, someone uh, he was a he was my partner back then. Maybe you guys have know him or have heard of him or seen his work, Bratislav Milenkovic. When I say it, you probably guys have no idea who it, who that is. But if I show you his work, like you would probably know. Um, I'll I'll if if any of you like would like to kind of like see deeper who he is, like I I, I can leave that afterwards. We came with a singular idea. So the market in Serbia, like back then didn't, like was kind of like a tabula rasa, it didn't have anything. It was so empty, uh, it, was, it was a perfect place to experience and, uh, and, um, and like do innovative things, just because the market didn't have anything. So like, opposed to what you guys had or have still here in the States, uh, none of those things existed 10 years ago in Serbia. So like the microbreweries, like they didn't exist. Like th those were kind of like just starting up in like 2013, 12, 13 uh, in Serbia. So like it was, it was like very fruitful for a creative, but at the same time, it was very challenging just because the, the market was open, but there was no understanding. Like there was no cultural background they would like the people who came up with, uh, who were coming up with, uh, with work, like they didn't, like they couldn't see as far as we within the studio kind of like had ideas. And um, this is the studio, the first one we, we had, as you can see, it's like very low key, uh, but it was, it, was, it, was, it was actually based in, uh, in, uh, in my apartment and um, and this is where actually the magic started. So as we, as we kind of like got together, uh, the first idea that we wanted to try was, all right, we gotta get like the most people that we appreciate and we love and that we kind of like admire and ins get inspired by. We wanted to make an exhibition. So we started with, with this exhibition, um, which kind of like opened up the, 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 the kind of like opened up the doors for us because we were able to communicate with the outside world, uh, so outside of, of Serbia, and we got the like we got this this uh, possibility to to create something that's gonna be inspiring for people within Serbia and kind of like give back to the community, which was a very important uh, aspect for us, but at the same time kind of like give a different point of view, and with this afterwards. We kind of like went into doing like different things. Like this is a, this is a brand mark that we that we did for uh, for a ice cream parlor, um, and then afterwards like we kind of like got connected with uh, with a lot of different festivals. So the mixer festival, uh, we kind of like worked worked with them and uh, again trying to like connect with the community, um, bringing more of like these different ideas and like different ways of thinking. To, uh, to a festival that afterwards like became so important for the region. 
like now it's been going on for um, I think like the, so we like this is the third uh, we did the, the third uh, edition of the festival so it's still going on so it's going on for like a quite a while but like after after we work with uh, with with the team like it kind of like gained uh, much more visibility because for once like this uh, visual language kind of like spoke louder than the the the, the festival itself so and it kind of like echoed within the community, like design community, really quickly through all different channels um, and put not only the festival, but also like us as a, as a design studio put like on a, on a completely different level. <coughs> and as I was saying uh, earlier, so <laughs> there was no microbreweries uh, and we were lucky enough back then to uh, to kind of like have this chance and have this opportunity to uh, to kind of like create the identity for the first one. Um, and we worked on the, the overall like branding, and like the idea, but again, the concept of this was like bringing like the, those those same ideas and the same thoughts that, that shaped us throughout our um, uprising and in particularly like, like my like the club culture and the, the scene and kind of like, but also like all getting like all these ideas um, helped us to to create something that uh, the market was able to appreciate. That wasn't like so hard for them, but at the same time uh, was a, like a, a really good play field for us and like gave gave us like this creative flex and creative freedom to do some some unexpected things. Um, <laughs> One of the things that, uh, that, that, that I really love is actually um, when you look at work, you kind of like see the final stage of it, right? And we always kind of like go and drive like that towards that like end result. Um, I also like did six years ago, uh, this is in my exhibition. Um, I had, as probably any of you have, like so many like research phase uh, artworks that were as well as good as um, as the, the the final, or even better than the final outcome. But I like I like it was it was like it was so much. There was so much treasure lying down on my hard drive, and I just wanted to 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 give it some visibility, to make some sense out of like all of this that kind of like was just coming out. So I did this exhibition, and um, and I mean, like it, it kind of like just paved afterwards and, and, and gave more strength because it put me in a completely different position. Like I, was, I wasn't anymore just a designer working on, on commercial projects, but I was, I was kind of like uh, researching and I, I became more of a, um, um, uh, of a spectator at the same time as, uh, as a commentator of like what was currently going on and happening in 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 Serbia back then, uh, I we all, like I also worked on uh, another uh, another visual identity for um, for uh, for this uh, for this conference that happened in uh, that happened in the, uh, in Belgrade, which was kind of like the crossover between electronic music, uh, uh, electronic arts, and kind of like it was a conference by day and again. Uh, parties by night. So again, like that electronic culture and the electronic scene was very heavily involved and I was, and I was lucky to be part of it because the people that I worked with on these festivals and like these cultural events uh, were actually people that I met throughout my, my journey of like going out and, you know, doing all the crazy things that we do when we go out. Um, and it was, it was it was it was really beautiful, but at the same time the problem, at least for me, was uh, I I didn't want to give up on my integrity. I didn't want to give up on who I am as a, as a person. At the same time, I didn't want to give up on who I am as a creative. So uh, they kind of like limited me with uh, the things that I could do. And uh, <coughs> back in Belgrade, if like all these projects is. I don't know, like maybe you, for you guys right now, they don't seem like that wow, or maybe they do. But uh, they were like very progressive. They were very hard to, to get to. They were very hard to sell. 
and also the, they were not that well paid. So I had to do uh, basically side jobs where I was working, for instance, uh, at the agency from like nine to five. And then I would get home, be with my family, um, and then put my son to sleep. And at nine o'clock, I would go to my studio and like work until one or two. And I did that for like a year and a half. And, it, and it's exhausting. It's like you're, you, you're, you're doing so much, you're, you're constantly putting yourself and you're investing yourself into something, but you're kind of like not getting anything in return or at least something that you know like will give you the chance to to do what you want with your passion and kind of like you can be self-sustained which again i think it's a, it's a, it's a good um it's a valuable information information for you guys because for you guys here you, you i mean it's it's a privilege to live in a system that is developed that gives you the opportunity to uh express yourself keep true to yourself and at the same time, uh, make way for you so like you can live your life normally. So like I like I for me it was very different. It was like it was a completely different story. Uh, yeah, you you know this mock-up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it, like it well like what's what's really funny with this is that like this looks very much like Belgrade. So it's like very like East European, very like. Um, old, small streets, narrow streets, and so on. Um, very Austro-Hungarian. Um, and then the last thing um, that happened, and this is kind of uh, a very interesting uh, project, because it happened actually uh, at the moment when uh, I started my conversation with back then Wyden and Kennedy, and they approached me uh, and basically they invited me and asked me if I wanted to come to, to Portland to work at the office. Um, so it was very much like the, the last straw and I took it and I took the project and I worked on it throughout uh, my first three years in the States. So it's kind of like uh, the project that closed the studio that gave me the opportunity to touch like so many different things where like I did like I never did or worked on on packaging where here like I designed the bottle I designed the whole system we worked on the name we were like I, I worked with uh, with another partner who's a, a a copywriter and a strategist and we kind of like developed this entire world but we developed we developed it over the seas so I was here different time zones and we worked on it and we created like this beautiful piece of piece of design um, that kind of like like right now lives, um, but is so so disconnected because I think like this work would would have actually got, uh, gotten me to uh, to the place where maybe I wouldn't be possible to uh, live and uh, and actually develop further my studio back in Belgrade, but I was already here because it was well paid. Um, I had a, I had a, uh, I had a client who really believed in me and believed in things that I was telling them, believed in the work, but I was just in a completely different setup. Uh, I had like a completely different idea in my life, um, and so uh, with this, like the the journey of the studio kind of like ended up and wrapped up nicely uh, in a in a like in a very po poetic way because. Uh, it was it was kind of like the, the the crown of the whole like the the whole work, but you know I didn't do it at the place that I w that, that I was supposed to be. So like this is the moment where where for me uh, like I already stepped in my my new journey, and uh, so the current state of affairs for me is definitely coming to to the United States. So I moved here four years ago. Uh, as I said earlier, like I started working at Wyden. Uh, I came with the setup of um, back then a guy named Guy. Uh, <laughs> he he invited me and he had like this idea of like creating like a small brand studio, like a branding branding division within uh, Wyden and Kennedy. And uh, a month before I came in, he left the company. So I was like, okay, I already got my things packed. 
uh, everything shipped to the States. My wife, she, um, she quit her job. I was kind of like already announced to everyone that I'm leaving. And, um, and I kind of like just jumped into it, into the unknown, because like I, I didn't know like what, what was gonna happen. Like I'm, I'm not an ad guy. I don't do advertising. Uh, I'm new to the, to the country. I'm new to the system. I don't know anything. I, I have no background how things work here. And um, so like that was, that was kind of like a huge leap um, I didn't spend a lot of time at Wyden and Kennedy, uh, but one of the things <laughs> that, I, that I did, and uh, David, who's here with us tonight, um, he knows this, so I worked on, the, on, on reshaping these three letters. Um, so KFC, next time when you see it, it's a Serbian guy who redesigned it, just for the record. Um, but uh, w another really nice thing that actually happened there is that, it, that I met so many amazing people and I had the chance to, to interact with them, to exchange ideas, and actually to prove myself that the thoughts that I had, like now I could share it with like-minded like people and you know, like I wasn't alone. Uh, the nice thing that actually happened at, uh, at Wyden, and I was there for 10 months, um, I had the chance to experiment so much just because there was a lot of moments where, you know, like we didn't have a lot of time. Uh, when, when, I'm sorry, opposite. When we, when we had a lot of time, like we, like there was the studio there is amazing. So like you can just like touch in anything you can like. Uh, do arts and crafts and like you can create things with your hands that afterwards like you can digitize and like create something out of it and I think like that was that was a that was a really nice uh, moment for me like a breath of fresh air because like I, I, I really miss that e e e like experimenting that that I like I loved so dearly but here uh, the context of being in the States in a market that's so huge like trying to experiment was kind of like a privilege, so it felt right. Um, and as I said, uh, like these are like kind of like those are like nice things that happen, but it like it like it didn't last so long for multiple reasons. Um, they're not important right now, but I mean like everything that happened happened with a reason. So uh, after those ten months, I left Wyden, and uh, I was fortunate enough to get this opportunity uh, to get to Nike. And for me, Nike is back as a designer, as a, as a kind of like a kid growing up uh, and like being inspired through books or through like online. Nike was kind of like the driving force. It was like always at the forefront of creative, uh, a lot of different studios, artists, illustrators, like just like worked on it. And like, I was so inspired. And like, this was the time where I got the chance to do to do this uh, myself, and um, what was uh, one of the one of the first projects uh, that I worked on uh, at uh, at Nike, uh, and I was back then in, in cross category team uh, of uh, of uh, brand design. Uh, I got a chance to to work on the first fully sustainable project, uh, the Space Hippie. It was like it was so weird. It was it was completely like not not even like Mark Parker. He didn't like the name, so that's why like if you guys look at product, you won't see the branding uh, Space Hippie appear anywhere on the shoe. Um, but the beauty of it is that the culture appropriated this so quickly. They love the vernacular. They love the idea. They love the concept that it like surpassed what what like. Any like any any kind of like executive thought, and uh, in it just became like what what space hippie is is today, and <laughs> I'm kind of like very lucky and I'm I'm thankful for 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 this opportunity to like be able to to work on it, and um, after 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 kind of like working on on this project, uh, another other other uh, like other uh, projects came along my way. Because people kind of like saw uh, that you know there was there was kind of like in internally at Nike there was a uh, there was a creative force. Uh, it's it's not only me, but like within the team, there was a creative force that actually like could put like can can put out um, 
uh, amazingly creative work uh, and like can do uh, like interesting things. And um, so I'm just gonna kind of like circle back again to to uh, to like my club roots with uh, with this is that uh, whenever I do uh, a research or whenever I kind of like approach new project, I always go into the the, the club scene and the clubbing and uh, the the kind of like the flyers and like all that visual language is kind of like the foundation of of the things that I do. Like maybe sometimes like these these things can be um, very abstract or they can be um, um, uh, like not very legible, but still like they 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 kind of like have a, a strong visual identity within. And I think like right now like what's 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 happening is that people are adopting that and. Uh, going along because the world is changing, you know. Like it's we're we're not we're not communicating anymore linearly. We're kind of like we, there. There's so many different way, ways of of communicating. Things are go, we're going from like from minimal to maximalist and way, and and way back. And I think like that's that's the that uh, that that's the fortune that I had that I had to be at the at the at the right moment, uh, at the right place, uh, with I don't know the right idea. Um, so I kind of like got the, got the possibility to work on that, and uh, <clears throat> this is something that um, I was I was trying for for forever, and uh, it's the projects that I uh, that, that I approached in in Serbia back then. Uh, I was always trying when I was working on branding and like doing visual identities and so on. Like I was always trying to push for a, a custom typeface. And uh, and here, well, I had the, the opportunity to do that, but on a completely different scale. So it was like overwhelming at the point where I had to create, and I was given the chance to create uh, a, a typeface uh, that, that's actually going to support the, the entire air um, air innovation. And so it was it was like it was it was kind of like a dream come true. Uh, another thing is, uh, for those who don't know, um, at Nike there's a lot of really good creative people, uh, but there's just a, um, a handful of people that actually can create and like do work, because we we often because there's a lot of work going on, there's a lot of there's a, there, there's there's a lot of projects, we all we, like we tend to uh, approach uh, outside partners, work with smaller studios, agencies. Uh, individuals and so on, um, but then like when like the beauty of it is like when you're at the source, you get that chance to say like, hey, I want to do this. Like, let's not get anyone else. Like, let's keep this one within, because we understand the the the, the brand. We understand like what we need. So uh, I got this chance to to kind of like work on it, but at the same time, it's not only um, it's not only like doing the type or doing one side of the project it's like how afterwards it's being adopted by other teams and how other people are interjecting and like putting their creative thoughts and their creative ideas and kind of like giving more life to the work itself so it's it's not like it's it's not a, like it's not a linear it's like very uh like multi-dimensional um and like i think that's 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 beautiful and Coming back to you know like the the my, my background and uh, like the the multiculturality of the place that I grew up uh, gave me like this possibility and um, I work with Katya on 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 this like very closely. We worked on uh, <coughs> on uh, branding the Serena Williams Design Crew, which was again a community driven offense. It's a it's a project. It's a construct. It's something that's gonna live and inspire more. Uh, so bringing uh, uh, you know, people of color within design and kind of like giving them their voice and amplifying their voice. Uh, I, the amazing thing on this is that the team that worked on, uh, on this project was uh, made out of so many different nationalities. And just like being within like that multicultural environment, uh, we came with so many thoughts. The process was so much easier 
because all of us kind of like had a, a similar or, or, or a same struggle um, that uh, the black community has in the States. And like the visibility and like their, their reach to design was kind of like, in, it's, it's represented in the same way that I felt as when I was kind of like rising or, or growing up in, in Serbia where things like just didn't match or like they didn't exist at the, at the same time or like they were, they were like they, they um, we, like, uh, or like I didn't have that, the, the, the proximity to, uh, to be able to execute or do work. So this was like, this was a, this was a very intense project. Um, that like very like that that opened up uh, certain things within me. So I, I tend to do a lot of uh, identity and branding type design. This is this is also like the possibility where I uh, where I worked on uh, on art direction and like just like the visual creation of of uh, of the campaign and so on. So th this was <clears throat> this was kind of like the project that uh, gave me so much pain. But at the same time, it was so rewarding that um, it kind of like the whole journey was worth a lot. <clears throat> I also um, had a chance to uh, touch from, like, as I said previously, so there was product uh, as, as footwear. Uh, I also got the, 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 the chance to touch the, 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 the apparel as well. And all these things, like creating all these universes and like kind of like, Helping out not only the, the the creative team within brand creative that like will will use this vernacular and kind of um, build afterwards uh, a communication space. This is also something that uh, came through like really well on product. So like just connecting these uh, worlds uh, within Nike was was a, a, a very interesting thing because it, it didn't happen that often or at least like not at this scale. And I think like, again, uh, working with people and connecting with people, like, like we, we can do things on our own. I mean, we'll, we, we can like certain things, yes, but to a certain extent, like we need to get involved and we need to start interacting with, with others. And like that's where, and that, that's where like all these elements, when you, when you see like your idea on like very sitting, like very flat, on your screen, and like afterwards, you see it applied throughout apparel or pro or, or or footwear, or or like even like seeing it out in the world in retail, it like completely blows your mind. I had like uh, unfortunately with uh, with COVID, I didn't have a chance to see a lot of my work in in uh, in the outside world, and I was in New York for um, for the photo shoot for uh, for Serena. So the first time I went to the House of Innovation, and I had a chance to actually tactilely see and like visualize some of the things that I did and it felt amazing. Uh, it's kind of like that like long, like the, the reward of chasing something and like trying to figure out and like trying to, trying to get somewhere is kind of like finally making sense. I'm not that young, I'm 41, so it took a while. Um, but it like it it was it was really good, and again like I left this on purpose. This is this this was the this was the execution that I did, as a uh, as the as the inspir inspiration, and s afterwards the team kind of like got into it, and this this wasn't developed by me. This was developed by a completely different team, but they used the language that I developed previously and kind of like took it like a step further and like made made sense and like gave it another like another another story um and uh, uh i mean there like <laughs> this is this is a this is a completely different aspect of 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 work where uh we're not talking about like any specific product like right now we're talking about the category so like even like touching like entire category and giving giving a Giving a, a language to a category was 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 very or like very inspiring and very overwhelming because there's within Nike there's always a story and there's always a narrative involved in everything whether it's a logo or it's a visual language or it's a campaign like everything has a story and uh, like this gave me that opportunity 
through like experiencing like different products. Uh, this one, like I don't know, like you, you guys, you probably seen this, uh, the Nike Venture. It's a it's a mask um, <clears throat> that wasn't de that was developed not for COVID. It was developed with completely different purpose because they started working on it prior uh, the COVID happened. Um, but then again, like this is the final uh, like visual language. Like this is the identity. But then like there there there, there was like this. Uh, exploration that I did and that I like very liked and I'm probably gonna use this somewhere so I'm kind of like keeping all these treasures that happened uh, during the my journey and I'm keeping them on like I'm trying to find a place where I'm gonna use them because like this is all so valuable it's not only valuable to us personally as creatives but it's also valuable because it's kind of like a, it's 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 uh, again uh, the word journey <laughs> You know, it, it it's gonna get somewhere, and it, it it's gonna find its space and time where it actually can be used. So, like all that work really, really gives you um, uh, as much as as your like personal exploration and building. It also like gives you the the the, the kind of like um, uh, a, like a, a treasure element that you can use and reuse afterwards. Uh, working on Octa was. Uh, the same thing as well, just uh, a simple, small project with a very large uh, reach. Um, <clears throat> I'd like, I'd, besides the, the the branding elements, I haven't worked on 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 ad other aspects of the project, but it's still like that community, uh, other people, and everybody who was in, who were involved. Like they 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 made sense to this. And then lastly, um, like just an exploration again that I love so much that you know will never probably be used um, because it's a it, it was best poke made for 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 this campaign, uh, but it was just it was just so good exploring and like working on this and like understanding like like what are the possibilities how far I can push myself. How I can, far I can push the work, uh, like whether or not of the outcome, like the outcome is going to be there. It's going to happen one way or the other. Like that's something that's completely out of our hands. But the beauty of just like testing yourself, pushing yourself, uh, was something that uh, that was like that, that, that I found like that I find like very valuable within within this work. And so like this is kind of like the three years that I spent at Nike. Um, a lot of things happened. It was like it was a lot of uh, a lot of night, like uh, unslept nights, if that's the the the, the way to say it. Um, but uh, after three years at Nike, um, I was invited by uh, by Jordan Brand <coughs> to uh, to become a, a design director of product graphics. So I'm currently residing there. This is my next chapter. I have no idea what's going to happen. I'm kind of like open to everything, but I have like all these work behind me. And a lot of this work probably that I shared now with you that's never been used is probably going to find its way to get used throughout my next journey. So um, I'm like, I'm very kind of like looking forward to, uh, to, to what's next to come. And kind of like to, to wrap, wrap things up, uh, and I'm, I hope that I didn't kind of like smug you guys. Uh, it's hard to breathe under the mask, especially when you're talking. Um, so as a conclusion and kind of like as a start of the, the presentation was, the talk was, you know, like the list of things I haven't learned. And I think like these are valuable things for me, and I hope that like some of you are going to find them valuable as well. Um, so first thing was like how to be conventional i think like there if 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 you want to do something different like just completely loosen up you know like open up to things be 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 prepared to uh to to accept the 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 error be prepared for 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 the unknown and like i think like that that conventionality is definitely for creative is uh, uh is kind of like a a full stop um one of like other, an, another thing is like questioning authority. 
I think like we should always push for the idea. Like we believe when we believe in something, and like we believe with our heart, we believe with one, our mind. Like whenever that is, like if we feel that it's right, it's going to be right. So like whether it's your professor, I'm sorry, or whether it's your you know mom, dad, whoever, like questioning authority is always a good thing because it's always going to get us a step further. Um, I'm never going to settle with me mediocre. Uh, that's kind of like self-explanatory. I'm not going to go into that. Um, I'm never going to learn from my mistakes. I'm always making the same mistakes. Uh, and I think uh, the mistake is part of the process. Um, um, like the, the, the mistake that I made that kind of like turned as a mistake once is probably the next time going to be the right thing. So kind of like embracing the mistake in any way uh, proved to be good for me. Uh, I'm never giving up because if I gave up in Belgrade where when I was working a nine to five and then I did the nine to one uh, AM for a year and a half, uh, kind of like I, I never, it never came to my mind that I'm going to give up on the things that I believe. Um, and then with this, like when to stop. So I'm going to use this <laughs> to stop uh, this, the, uh, this lecture. Uh, I'm gonna leave you with uh, with some of the the kind of like the, the the point reference. So if you guys want to check out a little bit more work or like there's a lot more work uh, from my studio that I didn't put in this deck. There is a lot more work. Uh, there's even like some illustrations that I did, which you know like those again like those were the the, the things and the the, the the that I was experiencing, exploring, kind of like trying to figure out who I am as a creative. And, um, and there's also the Exquisite Corpse exhibition from the beginning, like kind of like the first step for the studio. It's still live. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna renew the, the domain, but you guys have some time to, uh, to check it out if you want to. And uh, that's it. I would like to thank you all, and I hope it was nice. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. I think we still have time for some questions. Um, I'm gonna walk around with the mic like a weirdo in case you guys need more amplification or you can just speak loudly and I can repeat for the folks who are online. So I guess, hmm? This is fine. Please, one question. Any? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Um, I guess my first question was, you mentioned how like the electronic music had a big influence on how you create, and especially you, you mentioned how like you as a person influences how much like things you create. Um, what does that look like when you're as you're working or when you're thinking about a project? Like, are you just constantly looking back at old record labels and magazine covers or in, or what does how what, like, what's the relationship between things that inspire you and things that you make? Yeah, so there like it, it, that's a, that's a really good question. Uh, first, I, I, I always go to the past because, you know, like the things that have been done doesn't mean that they're not relevant today. It's kind of like finding the context, how we can put the things that already happen. It doesn't have to do only with, for me, it's like electronic music, but it, I'm not kind of like limiting myself to the music only. It, I go to the, like the, the art history to like all these different movements from, from Dada, from Art Deco, from um, uh, Wiener Werkstatt, and like all these like different languages that happened. And I kind of like try to see and find the moment in time and how I can like draw an inspiration from all of that. So coming to your question is, um, first I have, a, a, a huge collection of flyers, which I collected throughout the years. Uh, those are from Serbia, from France, from US. I even played in Houston in 2001, um, which is, which was a, a crazy story. Uh, but anyways, like that's that's kind of like a first thing. I always kind of like tend to go back because there's always something valuable there. And then I kind of like try to see like how I can. Uh, like, what is the inspiration that I can take from there? Whether it's a shape, form, color, you know, whatever is the element, and uh, and uh, I give it give it a, co a context within the moment that I'm working on. So, it like if you like e like even if you look at uh, the work today, like 
uh, some of some of some of the some of the some of the big designers like you can you can really strongly sense like where they're taking uh, their inspiration from you know and like you can you can see like who's taking inspiration from music who's taking inspiration from culture who's being inspired by the world itself you know so but yeah it's like going back building up getting inspired finding the cue and uh, and then like giving the embodiment to the queue afterwards within uh, the time that I'm creating. Awesome, thank you. <laughs> I know there are more questions. You just don't want the mic. Do we have any online? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Oh, they're, they're at the wrong place for the autograph. <laughs> Hi. Hello. <laughs> Hello, um, sir, in the back <laughs> in orange jacket. Um, uh, can you talk about timelines? Like, you know, sometimes you do something and it's like super fast and, and it goes into it and sometimes the project can drag on. You talked about, you know, something almost becoming like the death of you. Yeah. Uh, you know, in school, like things exist for like a little period of time, and sometimes that goes for a semester. But like, maybe maybe talk about like what that's like being a professional, and about like how you kind of power through those really long projects, or like like how much effort actually goes into like even just getting a little mark approved or something. Yeah. So this is th that that's awesome, David. And um, so I think. It's kind of like as as the experience goes and as the time flows, uh, like the timelines and the deadlines become shorter and shorter because our mind is focused and like knows and has more information. So like that's a benefit of aging, right? Aging in any other way, you kind of like become more uh, more mature and you understand what's going on. But in in terms of uh, like uh, creating currently, especially within the within Nike, um, I mean projects can go from a day turnover to uh, to a, a month to three months to a year, uh, depending. Uh, I, I'm I'm kind of like more. Um, I prefer those shorter deadlines, to be honest. Just because I think the first thing that comes to your mind is the right thing. The moment when you start obsessing the idea kind of like dilutes itself. Uh, I think the, 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 the creation itself and kind of like the, the moment when you're like designing something, like that's where you need to take time. But the idea itself is, is it either comes like instantaneously, uh, which again, asks more a lot of time or, or I mean, like it, it, like it can be a death of you, which has been proven for, at least like for me a number of times where I was working on a project, uh, we didn't have a, like a, a we kind of like had a, an open timeline or a deadline, and uh, and uh, and yeah, it's just like you lose your 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 interest in proje project, you kind of like want to just like do something else because like it's it's like dragging you so much so yeah i mean i i hope that this answered to a certain extent or yeah the any answer works <laughs> <laughs> thank you i think we've got one from the live stream here uh this is from Raphael, who also wanted your autograph oh um, okay what's the biggest difference you found when doing art direction versus branding and which is in your natural wheelhouse? So, definitely. So the, <laughs> so definitely, branding is is my happy space uh, or my happy place. Um, that's where I feel at home. Like I know the, the elements. I know what I need to do. I know. I understand the world. Um, in terms of art direction, I appreciate and I love art direction, uh, but it was never like meant to be you know it's it's like i don't know the most beautiful girl in the school you love her but you kind of like it's never going to happen um so 
that's that's kind of like my relationship with with our direction uh in itself but yeah branding is like very like that's 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 where i where i live that doesn't sound like not giving up i'm sorry not going no, for that's the most that, no that sounds school. that sounds like you know like <laughs> knowing what you want right <laughs> it's not giving up i didn't give up it's just like, you know, you got experience and you're like, okay. I know, I'm, I'm messing not, with you. Oh, there is a question there. Hello. Hey. So to go off of uh, David's question, and I think you touched on it a little bit about um, sometimes the idea comes to you right away and you kind of go for it. Um, what does it look like for you to be in a situation where maybe it doesn't occur right away? How do you kind of become unstuck or, you know, get inspired or recharge creatively because I think um, uh, that's something that I struggle with in a way as far as just kind of being reinvigorated, re-inspired uh, and ready to kind of take on the next thing. Um, so what are like some ways that you do that or some advice for people yeah. who might be in that situation? It's a, it, <coughs> I, don't, I, don't, I honestly, and I'm going to talk like from the bottom of my heart, I think it's it's up to you to figure that out. Like that's that's first thing, but kind of like a like a quick cheat thing that you can do. Um, one would be definitely like if you're stuck somewhere and it's kind of like giving you a headache and you're not feeling well about it, just turn it off. You know, like <coughs> whatever whatever it is, just turn it off. Do something else. Go for a walk. You know, it's like those simple things just to get your mind unwind will give you and bring you clarity. Um, that's 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 very simple, and I presume like you guys all do that. Um, second thing is trust me. With time, these things are gonna become way easier. So like, don't stress about it. Um, and uh, and you know like and also like you know just finding something that makes you happy. For instance, like for me, it's music. So whenever I work, I work with music. Uh, I I can't I can't stand the the, the silence. Like even when there's people around me, like there's always music. And Katya, like she can, she can tell you, like when there there was a couple of times in the meetings we would like tune in, and like I would already have like a, a something going in my background, and I'm like, okay, you know, like let's stop it, or like sometimes like people in a Zoom call would start like you know, dancing or whatever. Um, so like you know, find that happy place, like something that you know, can uplift you and like can get your spirit up, spirit up. So. Um, yeah, that's that's good. That's gonna help as well. But yeah, definitely like just relax. <laughs> Thank you. I have another question from online. Um, what would you tell your younger and lost self to do more? So honestly, uh, I'd like I I wouldn't say anything. I like I cherish the the journey that I went through and the things that I, that, I, that I experienced and that I did. And they made me who I am today and they like helped me do this work and get, get me to the place where I'm currently. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't change anything, to be honest. It kind of like sounds, I don't know, what is the right term, snobby, but it's not, it's just, you know, it's it's the beauty of it's a it's like it's it's life and I was I was talking about this the other day. <coughs> it's everything that we do sums up at the final moment, which like don't get me wrong, it doesn't like it's not that dark, um, but it's really like at that final phase of your life when you know like the the last five minutes in a movie where like the life just flashes in front of you, and if those things. Like you can, and if you, you can look back at those things and like see that everything you did was worth to you and like made sense to you and that you feel at ease and kind of like at peace with things, like it, it like that's, that's the beauty of it. That's, that's life. That's the journey. And we should all like, we should all embrace it. We should all kind of like, you know, cherish every moment and like don't look back at it because. It's not going to do any good. I have another one from online, unless there's. Um, 
Do you have advice on how to foster more experimentation in your design practice? Exploring. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, ex also interacting with people. Like that's the that's that's another thing that I mean we can we can go as far individually, but meeting people, new cultures, new backgrounds, um, understanding those things. Like don't like don't know don't don't just go like on the surface. Like try to understand like how different people and like where they come and like what is their story. That kind of like can 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 help exp like bring your like make make you first um more um uh, what is the word um not fulfilled but more rich internally and at the same time like it's it's going to open up like new things because if we're not getting exposed to culture and if we're not getting exposed to to uh to to new people we're kind of like stuck within singularity and like we we like it, it's not sustainable so like definitely meeting people um, there's a great follow-up question to that, so I just want to run into it, and then we can hand it out to the crowd here. But um, what are some strategies you use to push conservative clients to approve and try new things? I'm sorry, can you say that again? Yeah, what are some strategies you use to push conservative clients to approve and try new things? So I think um, so that's definitely um, confidence, I think. It's like being very confident and knowing what you're talking and like when you're presenting your work and like also believing in your work that gives you the wings so you can push it. Because if someone like there's there's uh, today, especially in creative industry, like someone if someone says like I don't like that, doesn't mean anything. It's like it, it's 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 not enough. It's it's subjective. It's not objective. So for creative like you work, you need to have like an objective feedback. Um, but I believe like it's really like believing in your work, uh, being confident about your work, being confident about you like yourself. That kind of like opens up the possibility to, you know, push unexpected things with 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 the client. I think we have time for maybe one more. If anybody has a good one to close us out here. No pressure, right? I will challenge you to that. Um, so on the on the idea of like experimentation, and you had mentioned like pushing your pushing to the limits. Um, I'm always curious, like what people think that means, or how do you know you're pushing yourself, or what does that feel like? You know, and is it like a no wrong answers type of feel, or is that a space you're always in, or is it like do you choose when to be like? experimenting, pushing hard, or what does that, you know, kind of like, what does that exactly mean? So, uh, all right, let me, let me, let me try to figure out like the, the, I'll try to answer the question and you tell me if that's it. Okay. So, um, I can push myself with like every project kind of like gives it's, it, th that's an end of my creative thought for, for that moment, right? So when the next project comes in, the first thing that I do is like I go back into everything that I did. And I, that's why like I love those like everything that's like the process in between. I love those things and I, I keep them. Like that's that's so much treasure. Like you know, like that one hard drive is worth more than anything else that I did personally. So like I first go into all the stuff that I did and I try to, to figure out if, if there's anything that I can draw from, from that. And that kind of like gives me a foundation. So I'm like, I'm not at the beginning, I'm already somewhere on the path. And then from there, I kind of like start exploring more because it gives me, gives me that, the, that kind of like that push, initial push. Um, and then, you know, like based on that and the, the previous exploration that I did, which is like a research or or, or something else, it's kind of like based on the like kind of like connecting these things. And then, you know, like that, that opens up um, something new, but it's, it's like, again, it's combination of things. It's not only one thing, you know, in, in you'll, uh, you'll guys, you guys will see like, as, as much as, as further down you go the rabbit hole, it's kind of like easier, 
you know, like like the, just like the movie, the the beginning of Lion, you know, it's not, it's it's you know, it's also the journey, but it's not only the journey. It's like you know, like how you get to the to the end point as well that matters, but you know, the journey is 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 uh, is important, very you know. So okay, so when you mean like exploration, you're doing more than just like designing. It's like exploring other you know, like other, like, either, like, flyers or posters. It's not yeah. just, like, I'm exploring as I'm, like, messing with these anchor points. It's, like, exploring ideas and things like that. It's it's all. Okay. Yeah. It's, like, it, it's also, like, turning the, no the, the, the nods and the bezeers and, like, you know, twisting things around and, like, pulling points all over the place. And, like, you know, sometimes it's... I think like that's 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 uh, that's a really nice thing that technology gave us for those who can understand it. Um, like for instance, like for me, um, I work everything in il Illustrator, so for me, technology is kind of like an extension of me. Um, it's more than a tool, you know. It's it's kind of like the it, that's my paintbrush, you know. And like I use it, I don't like I don't abuse it because. I'm, w when I started, things were way different, and I like I I'm I'm not going to depths of you know like doing a 3D or like doing all these crazy things, but like within the vector space, I know enough that I can I can sometimes like you know like even like close my eyes, and I would be like you know like scribbling something in vector, and then like I see that it makes sense, and then I would, you know, try to figure out something from there or you know, as randomly, like, you, you pull something, or, like, you would, I mean, like, my artboard is crazy. It's, like, it's it's full of things, and I, I use the full extent of, like, five by five meters that we have in, in Illustrator, and it's, like, the whole artboard is full of things, and then sometimes when you just move something from one place to another, and, like, that overlapping can be, like, a, an initiation of an idea, you know, like you'll see something, like it's gonna c like catch your eye and you'll be like, all right, like there's something there and like you're just gonna go from there, you know? So. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. Such good questions. Thank you for being here. I'm gonna respect thank you your all. time. And thank you all for coming and engaging and thanks to everybody online. We'll see you next time. Thank you.